Good morning, beloved. Welcome to our School of Wisdom. And as you know, we'll be continuing on living forever. I want to do living forever. Today we want to speak of the mystery factor, the mystery of living forever. In case it's the first time you tune into this program, uh, I want to say welcome to our friends on the internet who may be viewing us via Facebook Live. I hope that you will enjoy this program and to be a blessing to your life. Turn to please your Bible, if you will, to the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, chapter 15. And from verse 51, the Apostle Paul picks up and begins to speak to the church in Corinth and we know by extension he was speaking to the church in general. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. Oh, here is sleep, he's talking about death. No, the sleep shall not all, as we refer to this death. That we shall not all sleep. But we shall all be changed. He's establishing something. He said, I'm going to show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. It's bad in for us that some shall sleep. Some will sleep. Now, we used to interpret this scripture to mean that some people will uh, be alive, just be alive when the Lord comes. And uh, so some will pass away, and some will be alive in the sense of, well, the younger ones will be alive. But it goes on, it's deeper than that, and we we'll go on, we'll see it. And if it was that, then there's no mystery about it. As a matter of fact, the word mystery actually covers the idea of hidden thing, a secret. It's some the information confined only to a certain group. A hidden or secret thing. So, so Paul was saying, I'm unveiling something that's hidden to you. It's, it's logical that if an audio story, that it, according to the normal order of things, that the older folks will pass away and the younger folks will remain until the coming of the Lord. That's, that's obvious. So then it's no mystery about that. But Paul, the apostle, is saying, I'm showing you a mystery. Something that is deeper than we understand. They say, we shall not all sleep. We shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. Now, he said, we shall all be changed. In other words, the Bible, the Bible says that even those who fell asleep, the Lord raised them back up. Yeah, amen. Now, uh, sometimes persons have a little problem in fathering that. How can the Lord raise up people who would never be rotten and forgotten? Well, if you did a little bit of physics, you will know that um, matter changes form and the Lord can gather it back, gather it back, no matter from where it is. So even though it has decomposed, it is still matter in the universe. See, you see, the dust particles in the, in the atmosphere, they're there, just there, and they can always come back together because whatever they do, basic, whatever matter is made of, the basic uh, building blocks of it, Will always remain. So, so the Lord can gather them back, and that's easy. That's that's the easy thing to translate. So don't worry about the words and so on. It would never be a whatever rocket. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. That's what God. That's why God is God. He can yes. He can gather them back. And so the Bible says that the dead, the brave, shall give up their dead. That's what will happen. 
And when they come, when they're resurrected, listen, when they're resurrected, they will be changed. They will, as a matter of fact, they will be raised, the Bible said, incorruptible. In other words, they will be raised not being able to die anymore. The body, the body, the physical body will be raised incorruptible. That's what the scripture says. But that will happen for them at a particular time. At a bend the trump shall sound. All right, it, it goes on set. For this corruptible must put on incorruptible. Yes. This corruptible, this flesh, this body must put on incorruptible. That's the mystery. The mystery is the corruptible putting on incorruptible. You think you're hearing this? In other words, that's the mystery of immortality. That the, the, this, this which can suffer decay, can rot, can do whatever, it must put on, it must be changed into a body that can't decay and can't rot. <coughs> And the Bible says in the Trinity of an eye. Now, Paul, is, the key is here, is this mystery. Paul is saying, I'm going to show you this mystery. No, you know, even though he showed this mystery, and the scripture is full of expressions and, and explanations on immortality, nobody got it. Because everybody felt that all this will happen when Christ comes. When the Lord comes, this will become possible. Then before that, it's not possible. You see that? The mystery is that this mortal, pinch your body, pinch your body, must put on immortality. It must put it on. This corruptible must put on. Here it is in future tree. For this corruptible must. It must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. Look at this. So then, so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the say that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? No, 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 no. Here we go again. Here we go again. Paul is revealing this mystery that must happen. Listen, Paul is saying, this, the apostle is saying, this mortal must put on immortality. Must put it on. The issue is when. Now, I think all of Christendom really believes or agrees that it must happen or it will happen that the mortal will become immortal the issue however is when will this happen when that's a big question when will it happen now Christendom has agreed and the, 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 the major belief is that it will happen when Christ comes and I beg to differ because when I read the Bible, according to the scripture, as a matter of fact, the scripture in John, when Jesus was last of his grave, Jesus made a statement. And he made that statement as it were, we would say, with no water in his mouth. He said clearly, as not turn to turn to John, if you will. John, John chapter 11, right? Yes. John chapter 11. Let's see what Jesus said. So, so the when the when factor is who we can look at. We can look at the when factor. When will this happen? None will happen, but when? Here what Jesus said. And Jesus is talking about the same thing, what? The resurrection. Lazarus was dead. Now we know the story, Jesus did not go to wake Lazarus, but when he got to the tomb, hear what happened when he got to the tomb. 
what the Bible says. We want to look at a dialogue with Martha. When he said, your brother shall, yes. John 11, 23. Jesus said unto her, thy brother shall rise again. Thy brother shall rise again. And she said, Martha said unto her, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. No, that, that's the church. I know this mortal shall put on immortality and resurrect in the last day. When? The last day. That's what Martha said. She is, as a matter of the church, is echoing Martha at the last day. But Jesus said something which went over everybody's head. We Jesus know. said unto her, I am the resurrection All right. and the life. Uh -huh. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Here we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. He that no, shall, no, no, shall. Listen to me. Jesus said, He's on the resurrection and the life. He that was dead, he believed the man is dead, yet shall he not live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Shall never die. The only way you can never die is because mortal is put on mortality. Yes. Listen to me, listen to me. The Lord began to show me. This is not, you need to understand what's, what's happening here. You need to understand what's happening here. Let me tell you what we expect. It's not just living forever. When you believe this in your heart, and your heart gets it, the change will take place. Let me explain this. Let me explain this. It is like The Bible says, Enoch walked with the Lord, and he was not the Lord took him. Right? <laughs> Enoch, Enoch's body had to be changed. Physically speaking, this human body can't endure space travel. Can't. If we go to a very high mountain, we can't even breathe properly in the rarefied atmosphere. The air is too thin. Therefore, this body has to be changed. You know, the scientists have been looking and studying how we can live on Mars, how we can live on this space and live on this space. This, in a glorified body, you can live anywhere. You, you think you understand what I'm saying? In that body, you, it's a body that is different from the regular flesh. The, this is true. This is um, this is. Uh, you can check this record. There was a an Indian um, guru. When he passed in his body, 23, 23 days after, the body didn't go into rigor mortis. There was no rigor mortis. Twenty-three days after the body. Was still like a living body. This is, this is documented. You know, Christians would want to say, I'm not a believer. In this document, you can check it. Medical documents, let's say that. But that defies, that defies nature. The Bible said that when Jesus said, when Jesus was walking in water and Peter started to walk, a regular body can't walk on water. No, they have their water. The water did not become concrete. Peter's body changed. Amen. For a moment, and the of life, his body changed. Listen to me. Your body is going to change. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll sustain the change. You see, yeah. I was thinking, you know, well, okay, 
We have to just live forever know your body is going to change. Amen. The Bible says this mortal must have gone in mortality. Yeah. Corruption must have gone in corruption. Yeah. I was looking at um, a movie uh, the other night. Uh, I was thinking it was. Uh, I like to look at these superheroes and this Shazam. And one of the things they, were, they discovered, the guy, somebody shot him. So his little friend said, you're bulletproof. He said, shoot him in the face. To see the body is bulletproof. And the body was bulletproof. Everything about him was different. He could fly, he could do this, he could do Well, the glorified body has no limits. It's, it's, limit, it's a limitless body. Amen. What I like with science, science always jumps ahead of us, ahead of the church. You know, science jumps ahead of the church. What Jesus did on Calvary, beloved, was such an awesome thing that people don't even have a clue. When she said, I'm the resurrection of life, people thought he was just talking about. I'm the one who, at the last day, the only thing about judgment and when you will come before God and all that. That's what you're thinking about. Jesus is talking about something completely greater than that. He's saying, I'm the resurrection, what I can cause. I'm the one who will cause this body. Lazarus, Mary said, by now he's thinking. Yes. That means his body has started to decompose. When he gets thinking and body starts to decompose, he said, I'm the resurrection. I can put it all back together. Yes. And Lazarus will show you know, it's a pretty video in the Bible. It's there, and you know, you find out to Lazarus, but I believe Lazarus' body when he came out was a different body. Because the Bible says he's so in corruption, he's raised in, in corruption. I'm convinced when Lazarus was raised from there, he was raised in, in corruption. I'm convinced of that. The scripture didn't tell you anything more about him, but I'm convinced that Lazarus had never had any funeral. funeral. Sure, sure. This morning, I had a witness in the spirit. I don't know whether it was my sanctified imagination or what, but I believe Archbishop living among us are persons who've been there a long, long time. People don't know that. Amen. Lord showed me this is what happened. He said, Mortal must put on immortality, corruption must put on in, in corruption. You see, because we think in our finite minds, we think, well, how can this be? How can Mary get a child when she knew not a man? How can that be? How can that be? How can it be that Jesus could walk on water? And Peter too. How can that be? You've got to listen. I don't want you to think outside the box. I want you to come out the box. <laughs> You see, there's one you think outside the box because you're still in the box. And when you think outside sometimes, you, you, you see, you come back in your box. Well, you come out of the box, step out of the box, break up the box, forget it, throw away the box. And let's look at the word and allow the word to, re to reshape our minds. Not the world, allow the word to reshape our minds. It does reshape your mind from the world you're thinking. The Bible says, this mortal must become immortal. Not, not, not me. Not should. It must. The question is when? Jesus says, whoever liveth and believes in me. The question is, do you believe in Jesus right now? Amen. Are you alive right now? Amen. But guess is when? It's now. Yeah. It is now. Yeah. So when we say that, if it is now, I can do it, just get in. Okay. Because our heads get it as up to now. Yeah. Wait the moment. The moment your heart gets it. Yeah. The moment your heart gets it. Sure. The moment your heart gets it, you shall be changed. Yeah. The moment your heart gets it. Now I'm giving you something to anticipate. I'm giving you something to expect. You see, the trumpet sounding is for those who are dead. When the last day is to wake them, it doesn't be a big trumpet like that to wake them. Because 
that song will gather, the, it will cause the vibration, it will cause all them particles and, and particles of matter that were disintegrated to come back together and gather together to form out those individuals. The sea shall give up, it will be all from the sea. People will come from those who may have drowned and fish may have eaten them or whatever. All the, the, and it scripted the, the, the thing, all that God pulled them back. Amen. No, no, listen to me. If you can believe God can do that, why you can't believe you can change it now? If you can believe that God can cause the dead to be raised incorruptible. See, first when I, I saw it in the Bible, you know, I'm thinking that people are already rotten. But you can't really you can't really destroy because listen to me. At the base of matter, you know what it discovered? The base of matter, when it goes right up, it's energy. It's energy. Any scientist works is solved will tell you it's really energy. Well, we learned something early in school about energy. It can't be created, it can't be destroyed. Mm -hmm. Energy can't be created, it can't be destroyed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me show something. Let me give you an example. You have a piece of wood. That wood has in it carbon. The carbon is energy. Which of all the wood you said this wood has energy? Yeah, light it. And then the, you will release the energy, comes out as heat. Comes out as heat. It's energy. The stored in the wood comes out as heat. Energy is stored in everything. But all you need to do is to change the environment, and the energy will manifest, will manifest itself. When you believe, you change the environment in your body. And your energy in your body begins to manifest itself in a different way. When Jesus said to Peter, Lord, if it's you with me come, and Jesus said, come. The more Peter believed, the environment in his body was changed. And both just Peter's body was able to walk with God. Because it was a different body. Mm -hmm. Think of it, Bible said Philip was ministering to the Ethiopian eunuch. And then, all of a sudden, the Bible was some other place. Yes. He didn't catch any car, That's right. no train. That's right. in, 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 in scientific terms, he teleported. Yes. Uh, oh my God, God, God. See, see, look at it there. Shan, what would he say to Dave? Go to scripture, I show some, I show some. Uh, I hope your mind can take it. Go to John chapter um, John chapter Nicodemus verse 3. Yes, yes please read me. And who look into just my name? John chapter 3 from verse 1. Yes. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Then he entered the second time into his mother's womb and be born. 
Jesus answered, Very, very, I say, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the soul. Yes. yes. Yeah. That is born of flesh is flesh. Yes. And flesh really distinguishes flesh and spirit is into the mind, the mind. Because the Bible said the, the flesh profited nothing. This human body, as it were, is not the issue. It's the mind. The, 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 the spirit. What, what is happening there is a consciousness. Because he says, that is born of flesh is flesh. When you're born of God, when you're born again, people talk, talk, spoke of born again as when you're born again, you can't drink and you can't smoke. And you can't go to parties and not love it. When you're really born again, that which is born in the flesh is flesh. That means it's subject, listen, it is subject to the things of the flesh. Amen. But that which is born in the spirit is spirit. It is not subject to the things of the flesh. Spirit is not subject to the things of the flesh. Well, let, let, let's example, use an example. Well, in the flesh, you need to get from point A to point B. You have to walk, catch a car, or fly, or whatever, or run, or swim. Depends on what, what separates you from where you're going. If it's water, then you can swim or you can take a boat. If it's land, then you can, you can walk, you can run, or you can take some form of transportation. That's the flesh. Your spirit is not limited to that. Spirit don't need a boat to get from one shore to the next shore. No, Jesus said, Jesus said, He said, That's what you're born of the Spirit is spirit. The moment we receive it in our hearts, deep in our heart, that we are born of God, and we are, that we are born again, and we are born of spirit. You see, you talk of being born again, and this thing of born again, but no things I used to do, I do them no more. So I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't. I am born again. Jesus said, which is born of the spirit is spirit. That's right. You know what happens? That it becomes limitless. Remember when God went asked me, he said, Well, what the Bible says, God is spirit. What do you mean? And you know, he talked about it's invisible. And then the Lord said, No. Spirit is not just about being invisible. Spirit is limitless. Amen. Oh, you remember this word, limitless. They, they, they even have a movie name called Limited. But spirit is limitless. People think of God as being invisible. No, it is limitless. What that means is that he can be whoever he wants to be. Yes. He has no limits. The Bible says he fills everything. That's right. I mean, God fills everything. He fills your body, your clothes. He fills the flowers. He fills them. He fills everything. Do we wash the floors? No, we don't wash the floors. But He says He fills everything. Amen. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says we live in Him. Yes. In Him we live and move and have our being. Then the Bible says He lives in us. No, I've lost Him a long time in the natural sense. Yes. Because hold on, you fill everything. Let me you in everything. And then I'm living in you. But now you're living in me. You, you, you can't go to this, right? Now let me tell you answer it. He is limitless. Yes. He is simply limitless. Limitless. When Jesus says that which is born of spirit is spirit, in not to say you're limitless. Some of can scream it. I was scream, I was scream because this is like I 
I think it's really true to know these things. Go to Romans chapter 12, please. I have to throw it in for a moment. The Spirit saying that if all of this show why, <laughs> because we 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 will like a eagle that has all that was the egg was put in a fowl's nest. And even when he was hatched, he never knew he was an eagle. He thought he was a chicken. He was scratching around like a chicken, looking for brains. Now, eagles don't eat brains. Eagles eat chickens <laughs> and eat fowls. And he's looking at this fowl as his mother. You understand? It's like Lion King. He's a bit of little bees are singing Una Matata. And he's a king of beasts. Mm -hmm. And the bees are slapping, and the little monkey is slapping him. You understand? Because he does not have a consciousness of who he is. Yeah. You know, I'm stretching, I'm stretching, because I want to change your paradigm. The world of the Lord wants to change your paradigm. Because as soon as you begin to think, as soon as you get out of the box, not being outside the box. When you begin to think of yourself, you don't want to stay in the box anymore. You don't mean boxed in my religion and tradition. You don't box in my that foolishness. But religion and tradition box you in. Yes, sir. And give you a church. So, so we think church. No, God is not. It's a price in the economy so you can have church. Christ in the economy so you can have church. And sing and shout and praise the Lord. You think no Christ in the economy before? You know what our redemption is about? Mm. It's to bring back all the things before. Praise God. Oh, that was writing to Rome. I mean, we wrote from the book of Romans. Yeah, he wrote from Romans. Yes. He was very controversial. But Romans, he said, verse Romans chapter 12, verse 2, please. And be not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Let read one thing, because some people might be listening and say, You see, you skip one, read one. I want to talk about one. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, <clears throat> holy, acceptable unto God. Which is your reason of the service? All right. Okay. This is. When the church spoke of that, this is this, this. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 is the church scripture. Pre present your bodies holy and acceptable unto the Lord. But uh, this scripture explains itself. Holy and acceptable unto the Lord is your reason of the service. Your reasonable service. You're preaching the gospel. You're doing whatever you, you're bringing the teaching. That's your reasonable service. Yes, but when you when you in the service of the Lord, your body is presented only in that circle. All them judges, body was only in that circle of the Lord. Jephthah, would I be robber? Robert, Samson, every one of them. But I shock you. God called one of the kings, a Babylonian king, who says Cyrus, semi servant, yes. the donkey Jesus ruled, ruled in on him. Was holy in itself because Jesus is in that now it's holy. When Peter gave Jesus the boat, the boat became a holy boat because Jesus was using it. You know, there's a lot of guys but you know what church tells you? What church tells you? Well, the Lord can't use you. If you are not 
holy and separated. Who is it in your life? What do I can use it to? This spirit is the Holy Spirit. He makes holy. When Sanatu was in bed with a prostitute, the spirit came on him and made him holy. He was holy in, in that bed. This is what the Holy Ghost means. Holy means it separates from God. It's a God that uses. When the donkey spoke, There was the spirit of the Lord that made it down be holy. The Lord was holy at that moment. Mm-hmm. And when you have your body, say, Lord, okay. if you're sweeping the church, you're holy and accepted unto the Lord. Mm-hmm. If you dedicate it, I'm, I'm committed as to the church. If I'm dancing, so I, I'm going to dance in, in church, in the ministry of dance, so I, I'll be able to encourage people and build their faith by my dance. That's what really is the if you're singing, oh, that's the reason for service. See, George said, you know, well, you know, you can't drink, you can't smoke. You can't do all these things because the Lord is not going to use you. And have you seen some that some some of the scripture, some of the songs that the church exalt and love and, and cause the, the, the anointing to flow were written by gays? Say, hey, Lord, what you're all about? <laughs> I have heard how Christians know were brought before as fire and strong. Who wrote it? Again. When they return in short realizes again, they don't want to sing it. I used to sing it. <laughs> it was our national anthem, it was our church anthem at one time. I pledge allegiance to the now. Till the real scope of wrote it. You see, I don't like religion, make you a hypocrite. Some of the most talented people, some of the most talented music, especially musicians, might not be straight as an arrow. <laughs> I think that God's angel to them, leave them people know him. Hmm. He makes so you know, the Bible said, Oh, she got old. Jesus, Peter went down to Joppa. He would not send down to Christ in Joppa. But before, he was. He ate, you know, and half the year. But he got no right to try. <laughs> he lied on a seat there. And then he had a vision. And the Lord said, Peter, rise, kill and eat. And there will be the said, No, Lord. All kind of beasts, all kind of, you see, all kind of creepy things. All kind of creepy things. He said, kill and eat. He said, Oh, Lord. I know he didn't coming around to you. Mm-hmm. There, there, there was spirits that said, he said, call, the pension, the pension, the pension. Call nothing. Ooh, 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 ooh. Mm-hmm. Oh, somebody be said. Ah, yeah. My God, I, I, I can't download everything on your media and my YouTube. You find the Archbishop? I'm going to help you here. If I give you all this in one dose, I don't have the key. Want to read your conference, please? Acts chapter 10, from verse 9. On the morrow, as they went on the journey and they ran into the city, Peter went up upon the house of the prayer about the sixth hour. Mm-hmm. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made him, him eat yet, he fell into a trance. Yes. And saw heaven open, mm-hmm. and a certain vessel descending unto him, as it had been a great sheet, knit at the four corners and led down to the earth, wherein were all manner of four footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts. And creeping things Ooh. and folds of the air. Yes, sir. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. Mm-hmm. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Oh, boy. 
the voice given unto him again the second time. What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. This was not thrice. And the vessel was received up again into heaven. I mean, thieves, murderers, gays. This was curated. And, and, and they did Johnny went down to Jabba, where he met the man, Cornelius is all right. Yeah. Cornelius of House and his servants and all that. And of those of Italian bands. And the Bible says he, he, he even baptized them. Yeah. The God of Spirit fell on them. So it, it tells us that when you understand it, you transcend the little foolish things that people argue about and argue about gays and argue about, uh, about who drink and who smoke and you think you think Christ went to Calvary to deal with that. You're going to spread your spirit. Amen. You see, if 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 but they never had a revelation, but if you had a revelation before, then what men will be will be doing. Is, is understanding and believing according to the word of the Lord. I'm born with spirit, I'm spirit. Yes. Well, you see, our consciousness of your still flesh. Uh huh. That's our consciousness. You know, I, would be, I was in the military. I know, I know there are times you would run and physically you'll feel depleted, like your body, I mean, like you just can't go and not a step. At this point, you want to stop. This is the end of the road. And then whoever was leading would pick up the chant. It's not the body, it's the mind. Mm. It's not the body, it's the mind. It's not the body, mm. it's the mind. Nice and easy. We've done it already. And you run double the distance. Mm. And after a while, you don't even feel like, you know the point of it? You feel like you're going to die. Yes. But when you get in, then you will think, you're so tired, I have to go and lie down and sleep. Sleep away. It's not even going to play cards. It's not even going to grow up in the foolishness in the Bible. Because not the body is the mind. That's why we're hung off. Could run a marathon, marathon in the desert, in, in the desert, in the desert, a marathon without drinking and drop, taking a drop of water. Because not the body is the mind. That's why you can swim on the water for a, a company of 200 meters or whatever, and, and hold his breath in ice cold water because not the body is the mind. And all these are classic things to tell us. This is just to show that this is not the body, it's the mind. And when we begin to believe God and to believe we are born of God and to, and to begin to walk as sons upon this earth, yeah. then the mystery of immortality will kick in. Go, go to Galatians, I'm just going to help you a little bit. Galatians chapter. I want to still help you a little bit. Because I don't even know if you're still with me. You're still with me? Are you with me? Amen. Amen. Pray God you're with me. Yeah. Galatians chapter 4. Yes, please. Verse 1. Now I say that the heir, as long as he's a child, differeth nothing from the servant, though he be Lord of all. <laughs> but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of some. Stop, stop, stop. You know, your religion tells you the elements of the world is dancing and smoking and and, and, and drinking. <laughs> there are five elements. Wind, wind, world, water, fire, and air. 
And we have done bondage on them because they have marched you over us. Over yes. So we were in bondage on the elements of the world. In other words, we 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 could not rise above them. We could not rise above them. They determine where we how far we go, where we go. Those five elements. They were, as it were, our masters. Even though, Bob said, the heir, as long as he's a child, is under tutors and governors. Even so, we were in bondage under the elements of the world. That's what Bob says. I don't know how religion comes to tell you it's drinking and smoking and partying. I don't know what is wrong with it. That would mess me up. Because Christ's intention was for God to produce sons, not Christians, sons, sons upon the earth, who are not in bondage under the elements. Jesus came and walked with the sun. Listen, the element of water, with the bondage of water, if you go in, you will sink, you will not really drunk, and Jesus come walking on it. You know, he said, this thing has no, this has no touch over me. Well, then the water are me. And when the wind began to kick up in the boat and was going on, and Jesus said, hey, hey, stop it. <laughs> you know what Jesus said? Stop it. Yes. Another element, wind. And, and, and then he walked in one day and he saw a tree. And he spoke to the tree and all that. And you guys were, were astonished. And he said, why? This element should not, is it a mountain? Or if you say to it, move. It has to move. He was, he was giving us a glimpse of what sonship is. Amen. Are you hearing this? Yeah. I'm trying to get through the box. Nothing goes. I'm going to get through the box. Break up the box. Even so, we were in bondage and elements. But in the fullness of time, oh, read really what it said. Read really what it said. Oh, she woke up. No, it's going to but when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of the woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons, and because ye are sons, God had sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. And if a son, you're no more servant. We're no more servants, we're sons. But you know what happened? We have not yet put on this son's mindset. That's why the Bible says, I was in Romans, and I, I left the scripture and came away from there. But the next verse 2 says, We're not conformed to this world, but we got be transformed by you know, the mind. When your mind begins to think differently, what is the transform? The word there is metamorpho, which is the same root word for metamorphosis. As a butterfly, a caterpillar turns into a butterfly. So we, so we change. And the word is specific. You see, word is, you see a caterpillar crawls, it crawls, it crawls, and eats and leaves. But a butterfly, when it changes, it, 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 it masters the air. You see that? So this is why Jesus says, you want to spirit, you, you like the wind. You're here or you're there. Nobody, you know, you you have no authority. Listen to me. Let me tell you. When you understand who you are as a son of God, that's when a guy asked me to pray for the rain. I said, No, I won't pray for rain. I'm not commanded to call the Lord because that's my authority. No, no. I'm learning to walk. We're telling them my balance. <laughs> you know, you're not a baby, you Wait till you get your balance. You understand? Wait till you get your balance as a son. Wait till you really get your balance as a son. That's why in St. Lucia, I could have said to the hurricane, I change your name, you're a cool breeze. 
Because we are no more on the bondage of the elements. So you can say the rain fall or the sunshine. Yeah. That's what sunshine is about. Get out of religion. Listen, get out of religion. Get out of, of, of listen to me. You know, God wants to be spiritual. Another spirit is spiritual. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that you are of the spirit. Then you, then you begin to, then you begin to be limitless. Then, then you, be, then you really begin to be limitless. There are no, there are no limits, there are no limits. And then at that point, whatever you think, that's what it is. That's what, that's what Jesus came to. That's what Jesus came to do for us. You can take more. I don't know if you can take more. I don't know if you can take more. This is a mystery of immortality. Beloved, it's not just, listen, it's not just your body living forever. No. I need to understand we have been changed. I was we have we, changed. It's understanding to change. What you really discover? As you begin to experience this change, then the song will make a lot more sense to the things I used to be. You would say the person I used to be, I am not that person anymore. It was um, one of the guys who went at an outbreak of cholera. I was listening to snippet was work and he was ministering and helping the other people. And he had on no protective gear. But he was not getting caught at all. I want to check. His hand when it touched. When the coral touched his hand, the virus had died. Because that's a change taking place. Are you hearing me? When you find that you you can do you, you you can some things that you should probably don't trouble you because if you see don't trouble because you have the mind of first. The spirit don't tire you, body is tired. And it's not your body tired, that's not why your body is not tired. It's your mind tired. In your mind, you feel you should be tired. In your mind, you feel you should be tired. In your mind, you feel you should be tired. I was absorbed in that. My cousin was more major luncheon. People used to think that something wrong with their mind that's human. They used to think you're not human. Because the ability, the ability to endure was phenomenal. It was his mind. His mind. You only get old, your body only age because of your mind. If you are in an environment, if you are living in an environment where, where the people at 60 and 70, they were still having, they were still playing marble and cricket. You be playing marble and cricket without any pains. There was a guy named Roger Miller from, um, I think he was from Ghana, I think he was from God. He played a World Cup for he was a football. He played a World Cup at 15. 15. Not played for the country if it was gone yet. So at 50 years old, 50 years old. People all, you see, even in sport, people retire because 
People retire before them, and that's what we're talking about. It's not as if age you should retire at this age. You mean age to retire. And so the mind begins to buy into it. And so the body begins to operate that way. But if you were in an environment where people at 70 and 80 still get their babies, you think you'd get old? If you live in an environment of eight year olds getting babies, you think you'd go upstairs? You would not go upstairs. You'd still be downstairs playing with your But because, you know, in an environment where at certain age everything this happens and all that, you accept it. You accept it. Same with men. I begin to tell them, say, you know, you, you, you were big now, man. Stop it. And guess what? He accepted that he's big. He gets his rocking chair. Mm. And rock. And you almost get a little drink next to him. And now uh, it's, it's only interesting now is in the news and your spare force when you say. Gosh, she's done the news, you are with all of this other relationship. Because she told me so. You yeah, accept it. <laughs> this is my church. We don't like me, you know. This is not this is not too churchy. Is it? See, this is I should be telling you that you go to hell and if you don't repent, this is what be this is what I think I should be telling you. I'm trying to have foolishness. You know the world of God is? It was a profound world. Amen. Listen, let me make a statement. And, and I think you make these statements and it doesn't trouble these church people. Listen, when Christ died on Calvary, by extension, in, in, in as a matter of fact, he saved the whole world. Yes. All they need to know is that he saved. Yes. They don't have to do it. All they have to know. Somebody has to tell them that Christ died for them. And the moment they believe it, it's applied to their life. Yes. That's it. Yes. Did you say, even to them that believe in my name, shall be saved? Mm -hmm. They just believe in his name. You understand how far that is? Someone said, What? Jesus? I believe in Jesus, man. Mm -hmm. Jesus? Mm -hmm. They're far from that. He said, he never have to say that. The mystery of mortality. I want to read a portion of scripture from go back to our text, the original text, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Yeah? Yes. Verse 56. I need to read this for you because it's important that you hear it. Read from 55, please. Uh, um, let's read from 54, 54. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, mm -hmm. and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sin? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Stop. <clears throat> the sting of death is what? Sin. 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 Because it's in sin, causes you to feel condemned and afraid. No, you, you, that's what sin does. You, as a matter of fact, you know, the law, the, the law does it actually. Well, well, this is, let me explain this to you. Let me explain something to you. Let me explain how sin works. You walk into a room, nicely carpeted, and you walk in and you're comfortable, and you're feeling good. And then somebody, you raise your eyes and see something written. Take your shoes off. Don't wear shoes on the carpet. The environment in your body changes. Yes. You suddenly feel bad. You feel terrible. Yes. I mean, if you're good. Or imagine you're a lady and you are having a good time walking there. 
And you know you have on your nice dress, white dress, and so. And then someone whispers to you, you had an accident. You were the bell of the party, you were dancing, you were doing everything like this. And According to the people, the, the common saying, the dance done. <laughs> your dance finish. Or you're a man, men, 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 less, but you, you might be giving a speech or something, and someone says, send you a note, blow your nose. <laughs> and the not know what that means, or you know, man, scratches over. <laughs> She can know <laughs> Immediately, immediately, the whole environment, your, your body, you lost your, 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 your confidence, you lost your concentration, you lost everything. It's like, all of a sudden, you can't function right. Why? Because you heard something which affected your mind. That's how law, that's how the law works. And that's how this principle of sin works. So, when God said to Adam, the day he did this, you should surely die. As soon as that happened, his mind was affected, and the environment in his body, because him, by his words, when God asked him, what happened? He said, what your voice? And I was afraid, because I was naked. Now, let me tell you there are two things. There's shame and fear. And the law is set there to bring shame and fear. That's why I put over you. So people think it, the law is put there to keep you in line. No, it's to make you, it's to keep you in a certain state. And when God moved, removed the law, it was to remove you that you don't have to be in that state. Though in a state of shame and fear, you don't have confidence, and therefore you are locked into the flesh. You don't have to go no, inside your body. You know what the Bible says? The strength of sin is the law. Sin is a consciousness. Hamathia is not, it is not just an act, it's a, it's a whole state, it's a mindset which is produced by the law. And not only is it produced, it assists as it's produced an environment in your body, it is produced which causes decay and destruction and the sickness which results in it. Results in it. That's what the Bible says. He sent us on to redeem them that were under the law. They were in bondage under the elements. Not only one, that's what the law does. The law puts you in bondage under the elements. Like you can't function as God intended to function. You can't walk a spirit. It keeps you locked into the flesh. But when the, you are not under the law, you don't think about the how you come under the law. Don't think about any law. No, one of the things the enemy wants to do, the enemy of the soul wants to do, and as a matter of fact, it's your flesh. Your flesh wants, your flesh wants to stay, stay dominant. So I don't want a spirit that you don't just you walk a spirit, but it's just flesh. And flesh adores the law. Because flesh likes to boast. There's not some reason with your enemy, it's your flesh. It wants to keep you on the law. The moment you begin to operate the spirit, then the flesh has to take a back seat and the flesh has to just cooperate. Don't you be said the flesh box is talking? It's the spirit of quickness. I will I thought of exhaust. I can't exhaust this morning. I have to come back. Because I just introduced you to it and I know your minds are now trying to assimilate what I said, some of the things I said. When our friends on the internet, I don't know, I know some of you may have questions, I don't know how to take them. But um, perhaps you can write them in or send them in, and I hope that you are blessed. 
and um, see you the next next time. God bless. <laughs>